Just do it, do it, do it, do it, do it now. Make it good. Suck this. Hi everyone, welcome back to Plant Boy. My name is Cade, and before we get started, I want to say make sure you're watching in 4K Ultra HD. The camera has been upgraded recently, so um, get up into these pores and uh, take a look at my wrinkles. Um, furthermore, thank each and every one of you for sticking around the channel and supporting it. We almost have a thousand subscribers here, which is so awesome and very exciting. I've really enjoyed getting to know some of you and interacting with some of you as well and hearing everyone's feedback. With that being said, don't forget to follow me on Instagram as well as TikTok if um, our lovely president doesn't ban it. And <laughs> like and subscribe to the channel if you don't mind and if you are enjoying the content. So today's video is going to be all about the Ficus elastica, also known as the rubber tree. These are tropical plants native to the Himalayas and the Malaysia area as well. These are winter hardy in zones 10 through 12, so they definitely prefer warmer climates. These plants also fruit and flower uh, in their native environments, particularly it's very unlikely that you are going to have any kind of flowers or even fruits um, if you grow these as ornamental houseplants. These guys can grow up to 100 feet tall, which is insane. They get gigantic in their natural habitats. A quick Google search can show you that. They also produce latex as a sap. So if that's why you've ever broken up a branch of one of these, a kind of resinous white substance will come out. This substance is toxic to cats, dogs, other pets, and humans if it comes in contact with any kind of mucous membrane such as your eyes or your mouth. So make sure you keep that in mind as well. There are timestamps below for anyone that wants to skip around the video to specific topics. We are going to cover light, watering, humidity and temperature, fertilizing, potting and maintenance, and finally propagation. So those will all be linked down below if you want to skip around. All right, let's start with the light. Ficus elastica or the rubber tree prefers a lot, a lot, a lot of bright indirect light. This is a taniki and this is a ruby. I also have a regular just non-variegated one outside but it's a behemoth and I don't want to bring it inside right now to show you. Um, I have all of them out on the porch and that is where they do best right next to direct sunlight location, but they are not getting any direct sun unless it is in the very, very early morning whenever those sun rays are not too powerful. You don't want to give them any direct sun as that is going to scorch the foliage, especially during peak hours of sunlight. And you don't want to really put these guys in a low to medium light situation. While they can survive for a short period of time, they are certainly not going to thrive and they are going to have very small leaves as well. Um, um, we can take a look on this ruby ficus. This little tiny leaf here <laughs> actually occurred um, during the winter. I had this guy under a grow light, but it was not sufficient for it. And you can really see the size difference between these two leaves. So this is whenever it was out on the porch getting ample light, and this is whenever it was in the winter. So if you have any kind of smaller foliage on your rubber tree, you may want to consider providing it with more bright indirect light. As for watering your ruby ficus or your tanniki or regular ficus elastica, you want to make sure you are allowing the soil to dry out pretty thoroughly before you rewater these plants. From my experience, these plants have a relatively delicate root system that is very prone to rot. So if you are not allowing the soil to dry out or if you have a so uh, soil mixture that really holds on to a lot of moisture and doesn't drain very quickly and the moisture sticks around, you may experience root rot on these plants. So make sure you are peeking at the roots every once in a while and make sure that you are not overwatering your plant. So as for humidity and temperature, these guys are native to a more tropical climate in Malaysia and the Himalayas and even the Amazon rainforest. So make sure that you are providing your plant with a pretty substantial amount of humidity. 
uh, in my area right now it is very humid outside during the growing season so they thrive out there whenever I bring my house plants in through the winter I make sure that I have a space humidifier running around 55 to 60 percent humidity at all times for the most part so make sure that you have a relatively humid environment a space humidifier works great for this or if you have a um, like a drip tray if you fill that up with pebbles or rock or gravel and have water sit in there not touching the base or the root of the plant that will allow more surface area for that water to evaporate increasing humidity slightly in the general vicinity vicinity of that um, kind of pebble tray. And as for temperature, these guys are relatively sensitive to temperature changes in the environment. So whenever I move them outside or if I bring them inside or if I'm going away and I keep the house very hot, I make sure to really acclimate these guys and kind of harden them off and slowly ease them into their new environment. I would not take one of these and put it in a very drafty location in the winter. And I would not take one of these and place it near a heat or an AC vent um, if you are letting your house get very hot and then cooling it um, or even in a climate where you have major temperature fluctuations between night and day keep an eye on your rubber plant as for fertilizing your rubber tree a general all-purpose fertilizer would do just fine um, especially something that is a little more rich in the nitrogen due to the large amounts of foliage that you find on these plants nitrogen is a very great foliage growth promoter so if you are using a natural option such as a worm casting or a fish emulsion that would work really well as they are higher in nitrogen or like i said you can definitely use a general all-purpose fertilizer something like a 10 10 10 npk or a 20 20 20 npk would work just well as for potting, as I have kind of already mentioned, you want to make sure that you have your rubber tree in a relatively well-draining potting mix, something a little higher in the bark, perlite, sand, or charcoal substrate that allows more water flow through the soil would be ideal. These plants are prone to rot, so you wanna make sure that you do not have a very compacted soil that holds on to moisture for long periods of time, or something that for some reason may be high in clay, which holds on to moisture for long periods of time. For maintaining your rubber tree, you wanna make sure that you are cleaning off your foliage. I have a video dedicated on cleaning off foliage actually on this ruby rubber tree, um, and it's already dirty again. These, this broad type foliage tends to collect dust and dirt and debris very, very quickly. So you wanna make sure that you are wiping off that foliage to allow the maximum amount of sunlight to hit those leaves, thus promoting the massive amount the max amount of photosynthesis, uh, thus aiding in the energy production of the plant. And last but not least, we will talk about propagation here. To do so, you could actually just cut any of the branches off, remove the lower leaves. So if I turn this guy around here to its more bare side, I'll also, you wanna make sure that you're rotating these plants relatively frequently. You can see that this side is much more bare. That's because I actually need to rotate this plant to allow this side to face more of the sunlight area the sunlit area and this guy will kind of bounce back and the foliage will kind of go back over to this side. Back to propagating. So if I wanted to propagate this tanniki, I could just cut simply like right around this area, maybe remove this uh, leaf or even this leaf as well and place all of this area into um, like a water would be fine. You could water propagate this plant, no problem. Uh, it does take a decent amount of time from my understanding. Or you could do something which is known as air layering, which I personally have never done. But basically it's whenever you make an incision in the stem of the plant, you don't cut the stem off completely, but you expose a certain amount of the stem and then you wrap usually a moss and saran wrap around the stem of the plant, thus kind of mimicking a soil environment. And eventually there will be roots start to grow from where you made the incision and a new branch will form. Or you can actually just cut that off where those roots have formed and just place that directly into soil then. That is known as air layering. All right. I think we covered a lot of ground there relatively quickly. I hope that you found this informative. Um, very, very interesting plant. Super pretty. I just love this tanniki. It's probably one of my favorite house plants that I have just for the way it looks. This foliage I think is stunning. The ruby, I'm not really crazy about. 
Personally, I don't know if you may have had the same experience if you have both, but my experience with the Ruby, it's been a little more finicky for me and I found that it requires a little bit more light than the Taniki, but again, that may just be my experience. Uh, let me know if you've had the same experience as well. And please, if you enjoyed this content, consider liking the video and or subscribing for more content like this. I hope that you enjoyed the new camera setup and you found um, looking at my pores enthralling. <laughs> so I will see you on the next video. Hopefully stick around. Bye guys.